June the 12th, Luke chapter 15 and Proverbs chapter 12. Now, I personally feel a great sense of connection between yesterday, Luke 14, and today, Luke 15. And I mentioned to you, if you didn't hear yesterday's devotional, that Luke 14, I think, is the most important chapter in all the Bible. And it's the chapter where Jesus said, this is the cost of being a disciple. You must have died to anything else in life being satisfying. And you must know that I am the only source of life. I'm not just a source of life, but the only source of life. And it's a heavy, intense cost chapter and I just don't think it's an accident that Luke 15 follows Luke 14 because Luke 14 is the cutting down to the foundation. This is the cost. But then Luke 15, so I wrote here in my Bible, Luke 14, the cost. And then Luke 15, the love that chases. So after this digging down really bare bone bottom line chapter of Luke 14, we have one of the most tender uh, affectionate, aggressively loving chapters in all the Bible where where Jesus goes on and tells three stories. He talks about the, the shepherd chasing down that one lost sheep. And he talks about the woman chasing down that one lost coin. And then the story that gets us all, the prodigal son, and he, he goes and he's he's left his father and he, and he comes back so destitute and the father's looking for him and he sees him. And then the father ran. Three words, the father ran. And, and the, the father represents God. God. And, 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 and there's actually a song out, God ran, when God ran. And this is Jesus saying that when we're tender and we turn, God, say it, God runs. God runs. And so what a, what a beautiful balance the word of God brings that in one chapter, it's down to the bare bones. There is no halfway with Jesus. There is no, he won't be a part of your life. He, mu he, he must be all. He must live through you completely. But then the next chapter says, but he is essence of love. He is essence of chasing you. He's, he's chasing you down. Oh, don't you love that when you go through the word of God deeply, you see the whole picture of the heart of God. And along those lines, let's go over to Proverbs chapter 12 today. And um, this is just a, a personal thing for me. Uh, the first part of Proverbs chapter 12, verse 4, says, A wife of noble character is her husband's crown. And many of you don't know me, don't know my story, um, but, I, but I had a supernatural way that God brought my wife into my life. And everyone, my kids, my grandkids, uh, all five of my siblings and all their mates, all my nieces and nephews, my parents, everyone who, and everyone in my church who knows me knows that I married like a mile over my head. My wife is the kindest, the godliest, the sweetest, the most pure hearted. She's physically beautiful. She's spiritually beautiful. She's wise, she's kind, she's funny, she's charming. I, I, I wake up every day overwhelmed that God would give me this woman and go to sleep every night just praising God that I'm so privileged. And, and I think about this verse sometimes because if you walk into a room and there's 20 men in there, but one man has a crown on his head, you would stop and say, well, he must be something special. And it's really not him. It's that, that honor that's been given him. And so much honor has been given me because of my wife. There's so much healing in my heart. There's so much wisdom and kindness that's come in my heart because of my wife. She really is the crown. And, and in Liberty Church, we have a lot of men. I, I tell men in Liberty Church, are you a man of God? Well, let me tell you, when your wife walks in the room, do you pass out with passion and love and just that the queen has walked in. And if you don't do that, you're not a man of God in my book. And so I love the beauty of how a, a husband is so aware of how privileged he is to have a noble wife. And I'm the top of the list of blessed men. Hope you're having a great day today. God bless you. Love you so very much.